best way to get into Milsim. Why did you guys choose the rifles? And is night vision a must? Drop the taboo behind airsoft. Yeah. It is, Maggie, yeah. Why, we're, why, we're, why, why take the piss out of it? Be out here and enjoy it. Some blokes just need to fucking get over it. <laughs> <laughs> just like old times. Hello troops, it's Dan from Hades Airsoft. Welcome back to the channel. Joined by, name's Nico, and the guys from JBG out here on Emil Sims Radioactive Yemen here in Gran Canaria. We've just set up the FOB. We'll do a little podcast for you guys, answer some questions that people have sent in over the socials. Welcome to the Poncho podcast. What's the most important thing people forget to bring with them to events? Morale. Morale <laughs> 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 bow. Yeah, morale bow, yeah, yeah. That's a good one. Go That's on. actually a good one. Uh, Alex, give us an answer for that one. Maybe enough batteries, uh, enough to sustain themselves in the field most likely. Um, even if it's just the uh, the weapon batteries or torch batteries, they uh, not the variety of batteries that sh people should actually bring. Yeah. Don't forget your iPro. Clearly. I I Don't forget iPro. Block, JBG 10. <laughs> and then 10. 10. JBG 10, had 10, all the 10. Make sure you get a pair. Dry socks, dry clothing. I think people forget uh, how long we're out for and, you know, weather is so unpredictable. I would say, just as a counter to that, that maybe people bring too much kit. Yeah. And I think it's very easy to fall into the trap of bringing too many pairs of socks, too many uh, too many spare t-shirts, extra combats and combats and combats. Yeah. You don't need them. I mean, you know, I'm going to be rolling through this whole thing, obviously changing my socks, but the rest of it, it's it's going on and it's and staying dry on. Bags. And dry Yeah, dry bags, keep, you know, yeah. enough dry bags, because you don't want to come back to your, your sleeping bag and it's piss wet through. Uh, in your opinion, what's the best weather to do milsims in and what's the pros and cons? Best weather to do milsims in? Well, I mainly do them in the heat and I can say there's some pros and cons to that. So obviously, you're going to need to drink a lot more water and it's going to tire you out massively. Yeah, like However, how many gallons have you got in that fucking oh, we've Yeah, we've got a lot. We've got, what is it, eight litres per man? Yeah, the gross amounts. Yeah, so there's a lot of water and obviously that is there's an admin burden there as well with the water. However... Um, I wouldn't like to do one in the cold where that becomes just extra admin for yourself and you start going man down, you start switching off. Yeah. I'd say hot, but just not too hot. Do you know what it is with hot? Like, obviously it's like lovely in that, but like once you start running around, yeah. you're yeah. fucking sweating. And yeah. then when you come back to the fob and it turns to night time, right. you start divering because your sweat gets cold. Yeah, so you've got to make sure you're hanging that sweaty kit up, yeah. putting something dry on. So it's still a lot of admin. It's just, I think, I don't know, maybe I'm biased because I do most of my meals from in the heat. But. Yeah, Grand Canaria. Grand Canaria. Uh, so, a pro to the rain, obviously back in the UK, it's quite a wet uh, environment anyway. Uh, we all know what the weather like is in the UK. Uh, one thing you've got to keep on top of is obviously like your wet dry drills. Yeah. So you go out, yeah. you're going to get piss wraps, we all know that. You come back, you get in some nice dry. Dry sacks. Yep, literally. And then your morale's back up. So I think it's a bit of a pro, but at the same time, if, you go, if you're not good on top of your admin, you go down. All right, so what do you prefer then? Wait, what do you prefer? I'm going to say warm-ish. I'm going to go hot. I'm going to go hot now. <laughs> <laughs> I think just enjoying it as well, yeah. having a good time, remembering that it is a hobby. You know, you're here to do it with your mates. So yeah. if it's if it's pissing down and it's wet and miserable, then we wouldn't be out here now you know, under our ponchos, it's freezing yeah, cold. So it's definitely, for me, hot, so that we can just be out here and enjoy it and just chill out. Holiday. Yeah, have a few cigarettes, cook a steak, whatever you want. <laughs> Pretty strong point there because... We would, as as X and still serving, we'd be in like admin mode now when we'd be in those DOS bags trying to keep warm, whereas we're actually... Sleeping with your rifle. Yeah, 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 all that good stuff. But actually, we're out here like doing an impromptu podcast. <laughs> but here's another good question. What's your go-to food during a milsim? What, is it a meal? It just says, what, what's your go-to food? I reckon we can just... Haribo. Haribo. But that's for a snack. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I've got 20 hot dogs in my bag right now, oh, yeah. so yeah, that's that's just a classic and thing. He's not chewing them either. Let's go straight just down in. the pipe. <laughs> <laughs> just like old times. I'm no stranger to a hot dog in the field. Like, bring that bread. Yeah. Get them in the jet boil. Get yeah, the hot dogs yeah. in the jet boil. Catch up sachets from like McDonald's or whatever. Keep hold of them. Uh, there's no reason you got to suffer when you're out in the right, field. I'm, I'm going to bounce off that, and I want everyone to answer this. Go on. you you're the ration pack you're avoiding. Uh, corned beef hash. Mushroom omelette. I have to agree with you straight away. Mushroom omelette. Really? It's, it's got to be, what do you know, the Nepalese curries. There you go, mate. Yeah. Uh, so will the majority of blokes serving or having served in the military ever drop the taboo behind airsoft? 
Yeah, I think me. I think that's exactly what I'm trying to do. Like, I think, I think I'm so passionate about airsoft, and I can 100% see the training value in it. And I'm also super open about mentioning that there's some military tactics that do not work in airsoft. And some of the best players I've seen have never served in the military. Um, and it's a shame. Maybe it'll change. I think in America they're kind of leading the way. Like when I went and played at Milson West, there's Ranger Regiment blokes playing Green Berets, Navy Seals. Um, so yeah, hopefully we do follow suit because it is you know time behind a stock. Yeah, it's a different it's a different caliber and the velocity is different. Yeah. But it's muscle memory, uh, wax on wax off, time yeah, behind a stock. 100%. And it's fucking fun, boys. I would Go say. and goon with the boys somewhere around the world. Yeah. It's gleaming. Yeah, I mean that's what we're doing here, isn't it? Like yeah. obviously you travel all over the place. You guys have come out to me. I've come over to you in the UK. It's fucking mega, isn't it? It is mega, yeah. Why, we're, why, we're, why don't you take the piss out of it? It's been great fun. I think it's very easy to fall into that taboo when you're serving and you haven't tried it. But as soon as I tried it, I was like... This, and, and I would say I'm, I'm probably a better operator now than I was back then in, in a certain way, certainly on skills and drills. Because as you said, it's time behind a stock. Mm. Like the muscle memory, there's no like... Well, there's not as much skill fade. Mm, so yeah, like my drills are tighter. Uh, I'm more aware of things, and I think you know blank firing. Active. Yeah, and I think blank firing is fine, but I think you can train your men and women more effectively when you're hitting them with something, not to cause them pain, but just to make them aware of, hey, I put my head in that window, uh, that aperture, and it's I got a little bit competitive, and I got pinged for it. So I do think militaries, the Spanish do it, the Americans do it. I think it's cheaper, safer, and you can do it more often than firing uh, firing with either blank or, or live rounds. They've just got to get amongst it. And I will say this as well, if you pay attention to some YouTube channels, I mean, a lot different from what we would have learned where, uh, in regards to, like, pirate angles and all this kind of stuff. So, um, in regards to airsoft, it's, it's, it's valuable, it's fun, mm. and um, what else are you going to do on a weekend? Like? I think from our perspective as well, like obviously, coming up with uh, CQB courses and events like that, we're taking the tactics which did work within the military, take them into airsoft, adapting it, yeah into airsoft and be like right this is how it does work and the same as you we find stuff that doesn't um, that does and doesn't work um, but I think it's literally for us to like, try and find the things that really do work and enjoy Find as well. the experience though as well. Like I think with your courses, people just want to come and experience what it'd be like fucking blowing up a door frame mate yeah. and pushing do you know I think that's what you provide. You know what I mean? It's definitely fun. It's definitely <laughs> fun yeah I think there's as well from like a development side of things it's private sector always moves quicker than the public sector so that when you look at kit that gets used in airsoft it's years ahead of the stuff that you would see in a standard green army some blokes just need to fucking get over it and no, just get cool. over it mate like all right <laughs> next question right i've got one for unfortunately it's for four of us why did you guys choose for rifles and not any other regiment i'll let dan start uh why did i choose the rifles um it is sharp your answer, right? Yeah, that's gonna be my answer. I watched it as a kid, and yeah, it's like a like a proper Sunday afternoon kind of TV movie vibe, and I just remember it, and I was a fan of it as a kid. And then when it when the time came to join the army, I did flirt with the idea of other regiments, tried to going through the actual process, and then when it come, you know, the rubber met the road, I was like, yeah, no. I did a couple of those. I don't know if you guys ever did like insight courses. Do you ever do those? No, I didn't. I didn't either. No. So like, I as as I was, you know, getting ready to do it, I spent like. Uh, a four-day uh, period with the with the Paris. I enjoyed it. I knew I wanted to join, but I just wasn't vibing with them. Mm. I just they they were just I just you know great you know very professional. They they they're good at what they do, but it just wasn't your thing. It just wasn't my thing. I went back to the recruit uh, the recruitment office and said, what else is out there? And they said, hey, there's this regiment called the Rifles. And I was like, hold up, sounds good. That, that sounds familiar. And it was just that was it from there. I was like, if that's a real <laughs> thing, because I only remembered it really from being a kid. Mm. So as soon as that was an option, and this was like a modern version where they had all the trappings and it, and it was just a, a modern, updated version of it, I was all in. Do you know what was for me? I think the rifles were on a big PR yeah. intake They nailed PR, didn't situation, they? weren't they? And the name, like, the rifles, and when I looked at their logo and their branded, it just looked shit hot, do you know what I mean? Um, and when I went to the recruitment office, it was a rifles bloke behind the desk, so it's kind of just game over then, isn't it, really? Yeah, they've got you. Yeah. So that, that's, you know, yeah. the gen. <laughs> that, was, that was the gen. <laughs> I just wanted to get to the scop house quicker. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that was it. 
That was it. I just wanted to get some scoff. Um, no, I like the the way the rifles were different. Obviously, like marching, uh, the rank structure. Well, rank sergeant was obviously yeah, yeah. pronounced a little bit differently. And rifleman, just not yeah, private. Yeah, rifleman as well. You're you know. not private. You're actually rifleman. Everyone's got um, a training for. Everyone's got a saying, an opinion. Everyone's like that. Everyone's equal. Um, just the way we were different to everyone else. I liked how slack it was as well, like scruffy, yeah. but you were, you know, was yeah, it you Christmas didn't, you don't early boots. if you lay next to Don't bully boots, we're not guards. Yeah, Side is that, I liked it. Yeah, yeah. Sideburns, that's alley. a big one. Yeah. Sideburns. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a lot better. Yeah, it's, well, we always used to say, do everything that's necessary, nothing that's not. Yeah. Yeah. People can judge uh, a, a unit because they're, they've they not got their kit ironed. Well, that's not that's, that, not, gonna, that's yeah. not that necessary. We're not necessarily not necessary out here. It's not going to get you the hill quicker, is exactly. it? Exactly, yeah, it's not going to get you over that, over that feature. Okay, so next question. What's your favourite kind of milsim? HVT or objective based? Describe, Nico, give us a brief on what the HVT versus objective, like break that down for people. So HVT is a high value target. Um, so let's just do real world for a second, like Osama Bin Laden when the SEALs went and yeah. kicked in his front door, right? And then objective based is kind of like from like gaming, like domination, or there's you'd have like some kind of make believe city with different objectives in that you'd have to go and do. I like a story, I like a background, I like a sense of like almost purpose, like there is a sense of a mission here. But for me personally, actually, I like an ongoing law. Yeah. So, for example, in Germany, in Dark Emergency, they've created their own law with characters and um, they've done it. I think the next one's going to be 30, the 13th time. Wow. And the story's carried on. Um, oh, wow. So between events. Yeah, so the story carries oh, wow. on like Warhammer, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or whatever. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. There's a law, right? Yeah, so and when you a, battle some dude, dudes, yeah. like you'd carry on from that battle, yeah, and there'd yeah, be a bit sure. of a law, right? For sure, for sure. And I really enjoy the fact that they've done that, and uh, you know, and they've got characters in the game, like also, almost like a Star Wars movie. Right? Like everyone knows the characters. There's okay, law, cool. uh, and I think that's really cool because then your your event has spawned characters sort of yeah, invested yeah, yeah. in the law and the story. Um, and I think that's really cool because I think there's a lot of Milson companies that are just like, right, okay, this happened in the world, let's go do it. And it's like, it's a bit monotonous, it's a bit like same old, same old. I like a bit of creativity, you know, they're coming up with their own ideas. You can see Milsim, they run events out here in the Canary Islands, obviously. And so we've, we've been here for a few hours now, we've set up and at 9.30 we'll have our briefing. And after that briefing, it's, it's on pretty much throughout, isn't it? There's a small, there's a small rest, but I think here we've got like a a mix maybe of the two where there's like the different mission profiles will so those mission profiles will change throughout the event so i think over here would you say you get a bit, a bit more of a mix let me me the last one was epic it was what it was do you know? yeah i fully agree it, it was a really good fine line between like the background story and like hvt because we were tasked to going yeah. um obviously do like deliberate attacks recce like, remember that contact on the mountain oh what well, i mean you died I wish you guys could have seen that. It was like something out of a movie. Like, we're doing this like sneaky racky. They, they on this, uh, what would you call it? They made like a, a cliff. Yeah, it was almost like on the inside of like a, a mountain, almost. So, like, there was an edge going around the side. And so, yeah, there, exactly there were sheer edges. So, we like were, inside a valley kind of situation. Yeah. And we were on the higher bits of it. Yeah, in a way, yeah. But it was, it was a bit, it was perhaps a bit more rounded. And so, just to just to tell you how these two nearly nearly uh, ceased to exist. It was epic. Uh, Night time. There's me. You know, invited these guys over from the UK. Uh, you know, pleased to pleased to be doing a Milson with them. Feel responsible for them. You know, I've brought them over. All right. So go on, you take it. Over. Right. So we're patro- it's like night time, right? Yeah, night like night it's time. Pitch, yeah. it, we, got nods. we haven't got nods no yet. Nods. It's pitch fucking black, right? Yeah. Um, and everyone knows who we are, and we're like, right, we're gonna fucking smash these yeah. blokes. They, there's, there's, they have a hit. Like, how many blokes reckon they had? Like, eighty. It, it was the whole, ca- it was the whole enemy camp. So there was at least sixty guys down there with spotlights. So we're, we're on this fine kind of like pathway, ravine. wooded ravine, yeah. like pathway up this on the side of this cliff. You know, sheer on one side, sheer on the other. And so every time the spotlight comes round, we're hitting our belt buckles. <laughs> we're all stood like, still behind trees like this, like trying to blend in with try, trees. <laughs> trying to get any cover imaginable. Yeah. Just, just trying not to give ourselves away. And I just hear just some, some sliding, some rustling. I look over, Charlie's just making his way down the cliffside. <laughs> I'm, I'm stood in just sheer shock, like... He goes just like, what's going on? He grabs onto a tree, wasn't it? That was yeah, like... it was like a, a tree branch, which was just yeah. hanging out like a root, almost. And your foot must have just been on the... On the yeah, it was like, I didn't... I don't think any of us realised how, like, sheer drop I'm it was. stunned, mate. When I just watched over, it I was like, oh, right, okay. So at this point, I think, okay, that's great. Charlie has saved himself. 
And at that point, we see Lewis just like <laughs> slide past him. And it's all kind of almost in a, not slow motion. I'm just, I mean, it was just disbelief. I was thinking, right, he's going to die. He's it's actually like going to... each other going past. It's all like that. So one one of the memes are like both... <laughs> oh, right, he's going. Oh. Nobody can do anything. And luckily, Lewis, you catch on, don't you, to the very last possible branch. Last tree, right on the edge. So it was like as on the edge as you can get and I remember looking at it thinking okay that's fine I'll just grab a hold of that as soon as I'd done it I thought like fucking hell <laughs> how chilled out could you have been about this <laughs> and then I look up realise how high you all were and I was like oh wow um, but, and then was, start yeah. craw- clawing my way back up this cliff to get to get back and then you shine your LLM down there, yeah didn't you? I did yeah. and I shine my torch it's like, it's like a football pitch length like down Easy. like down so yeah that was lone survivor moment yeah yeah well dual survivor yeah. but yeah, yeah. it was just yeah. it's yeah. funny how we're bragging about almost dying as yeah, yeah no, that, I, was, that I, was a good I, event <laughs> it's a good I, event I, we'll I, be done now we're back yeah let's go for another one yeah i had my emergency whistle so i would have been fine oh, there you go. yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's, the list. Well, that's what makes a good event you know like um it immerses all we the adrenaline was going we were taking contacts uh bounding back six miles back to camp like yeah. feeling in a rush you know, clearing out caves, yeah, uh, yeah, having a thing. condor moment and eating morale bow. All these little bits at look like make these milsims like. We saw a video, like, so they want to see it. Check his video out from, yeah. from last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ultra milsim. And yeah. you can see, you won't see that bit, unfortunately, but you'll yeah. see plenty of other stuff. But we've got nods now, so we're going to be able to catch the nighttime shenanigans. So we'll see, we'll see what happens. So that means you need to watch out for these two <laughs> sliding down cliffs again. <laughs> right, so next up then, is night vision a must? I will start by saying it's not but I think you can have a good time if you do have it so I have a very basic uh, nod set up and I often just go without uh, over here in the Canary Islands they play with 100% tracer rounds at all times which uh, I've realised sounds a bit strange to some people but it's just the way they play here and I've, I have started playing here so to me it's normal so at night time over here you can see where your rounds are landing you can see where the enemies are coming from so it's not that much of a must for me However, I would imagine if there isn't much of a tracer element, it perhaps is a little bit more important. Mm. And so I, I kind of, you know, flirt between yes and no, or I'll use them and then I'll just take them off and ch- stow, stow them away. Um, but, you know, I definitely think there's a use there. You know, big investment, if you can afford it, then go for it. Um, I don't think nods are a must at all. What I think nods do is if you've been playing ASR for a long time, like I have, it just unlocks a new area to have fun in. Okay. And, like. and, and thinking about your, like your skills and drill, it's a new area of skills and drills to master. Um, okay, what about my kit? Is it IR? Um, yeah, that's a good one. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, Am yeah, I yeah. going to show up with other people's nods? Am so I visible to other? Exactly, users? exactly. Yeah. Opens up this entire other element of skills and drills that you just would never think of during the day. Is it? So it kind of like reignites your passion for it yeah, because. Yeah, yeah. If you've been playing all day, you know, it's coming towards the end of the day and you've got no other kind of fresh content to digest, it can get a bit monotonous. But when I play now, I'm like, yes, I can't wait for night time. Because gotcha. it's just like reload a new level with different gotcha. kit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you say that's when you make the swap from AEG to GBV? It's just like opens up a whole nother Exactly, tier. exactly, okay, exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah, the same, same, exactly the same experience arc as that, yeah. Sure. yeah. I mean, well, we don't have nods, do we? We yeah, just got the old Mark them, 1 eyeball. Yeah. You've used them. Yeah, have used them. I like them. Um, and I do agree with you, I think it unlocks a new area where you're like, maybe it even comes down to your base kit, like what you said about your kit, about uh, being IR resistant yeah, and everything yeah. like that. But um, no, I don't think you do need them. I think it literally just unlocks a new area for you, but I don't think it's a must at all in the middle of yeah. I think, you know, come with your like, Billy Basics and you'll still have a you know, really good time. Yeah. Alex? Oh, sorry, bro. Sorry. I mean, yeah, it's, it's great fun to use. Um, good little eye opener for people who haven't used them say um like new to new meal sims but i wouldn't say uh if you're getting into meal sims i wouldn't say it's a necessity for uh, a newbie straight away to get into having nods at night um i think it's better to sort of get used to uh working at night without light discipline first is probably the best option for you um and then uh yeah coming into the the nods which is a whole different ball game once um once you've mastered that sort of area so that's probably my best bet. Yeah. But well, combining your one there, Alex and, and Nico, it's it's um, you you are unlocking a new skill within that new area massively because there's one thing putting nods on and playing again with nods. Mag reloads, bro, under nods. Yeah, mag oh, reloads under. Yep. Yeah, really, is a whole different game. 
Um, so yeah, I definitely think mastering that new skill within that new area and not just simply a case of whacking a set of nods on. But from a military side, it's I used to love that, using a fist thermal sight, using the um, Lucy's, the, the driving ones. Lucy's were good. Um, and obviously the old trusty HMMVS, which was amazing. <laughs> but yeah. Good stuff. So nods then, not a must, but you can certainly have a lot of fun with them. All right, so what's the best way to get into Milsim and what level of kit do you need to start? That's, good I, question, that's a good question. Uh, I would say don't overthink it. Don't, don't think that you've got to be some sort of u uber elite player to get into Milsim and be good at it. I think it depends massively on the sort of event you're going to go to kind of do your research, what events do you want to go to, what events are in your area, things like that. And just kind of, you know, enjoy it. you've got to enjoy it at the end of the day. Yes, it is, it's harder. You're going to, you're going to have to be more dependent on your kit. You're going to have to be, you know, that, that's a steep learning curve really is, is living in the field. You know, people that have camped and, and lived outdoors and stuff like that, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be comfortable living outdoors. You've got to get comfortable being uncomfortable. Now, the level of kit, I would say uh, get in touch if you want a kit list. I'll send you mine. <laughs> uh, and on that kit list, the, it's it's quite in depth, isn't it? But it is a, pretty much a British it's Army kit on, list. It's but but on, it's yeah. got everything you need. Yeah. And I, right. yeah, exactly. And yeah. with 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 kit, especially if you're moving into a new area, there's nothing wrong with going cheap and cheerful first. But you should see a picture of me in my first kit. Exactly. Go cheap and cheerful first. Find out what you like, and then buy better versions of it if you want or need to you might not need to you might say hey I'm, I'm happy with that plate carry that costs 60 pounds instead yeah, of buying yeah. one for 600 pounds isn't it you know just because it costs more doesn't mean it's necessarily better 100%. that quality m might not be like how much is this top bro well, I have an army surplus just like five five pounds yeah. maybe uh, yeah we all went surplus and I think what well, we picked all these up for like 15 quid yeah. so exactly. five pound each what I think is Ali is looking cool for really cheap then you've nailed it yeah, if, if you can look good school. for cheap, yeah. you are winning. You're winning. Yeah, 100. Yeah, that's a really good point because you could spend, you know, 300 pounds on those cry precision trousers, but somebody next to you could have knockoff ones for and look just as good and ju look yeah. just as good and maybe, you know, you never really know <clears> the difference. I think there's levels to it, right? So with Milsims, there's going to be things that you actually need to do. You don't need to go like full um, edge lord with it. Do you know what I mean? No. I think like you kind of get into all the the more serious kit when you become more of a nerd for it. Sure. Do you know what I mean? I think most of your like regular airsoft kit for those skirmish games, that's your fighting order. Mm. You only need, the, the kit you need to buy is, is for living in the field. So that sleeping bag, yeah. that cooking system, the roll mat, uh, whether you're using Bergen a tent, Bergen, poncho. So really, you're probably more ready for a milsim than you actually think. Yeah, 100%. It's more like you have to, you have to break the, it down, right? It's the living in the field so that the they need. the living kit, exactly. fighting kit. Yeah. But I think like, finding the key things which help you get through the milsim like a bit like touching on what you said so i think we're all getting a little bit older now we've all got a few aches and pains like this to us is luxury last year we were not allowed shares yeah. expressly forbidden i hate life <laughs> i was forced um, to come what here touched on though bro he goes what's the best way to get into it just find a milsim book yourself on it and then worry about the rest afterwards just make that leap do it after that first one, find out what you did right, what you did wrong, what you need, what you took but you didn't need. And it's like everything, you'll get better at it over time. If you're in the Canary Islands, hurt up Hades because he does intro uh, into Milsom uh, events. Do, yeah. Do, yeah. So if you yeah. want to yeah. fly over, week one, day one. Yeah, week one day one, yeah. Yeah. One day yeah, so I've been doing those, you know, basically like an intro to Milsim to, so that people can uh, figure join it out. The club. Yeah, and join because this is a club event at the end of the day. So people that join this, they have to on on, on this event if they want to get on it, they have to join this club. So we do these, you know, tactile exercises with them over here and get them prepared for it. And I'll be honest, most of the work that I do with these people is the build up, not the 24 hours that they're out in the field. You know, we'll do Zoom calls where we go through the packing list. They they'll they'll be messaging me asking me is this is this the right you know soft dad basically. Yeah, basically, yeah, yeah. It's like an airsoft Milsim con uh, consultant, <laughs> just to try and get the. And so, actually, by the time they set foot to get their first like uh, kit inspection and stuff like that, I'd say eighty percent of the work is done. It's just fine tuning. They do that first twenty-four hour event, and they're absolutely licked by the end of it. Mm. But they're all smiling. They've all had a good time, and they have to do two events to get into this club. So by the t the second one comes around, I ramp it up. 
and they basically they'll, they'll be doing navigation they'll be doing Kazivak, they'll be doing medical drills all that sort of stuff mm. they've already nailed the living in the field they just need to fine tune the points and you know remember what points they got picked up on the first one the second one's a confirmatory event basically and after that I either sign them off or I don't. You've got to be patient because there might be someone that's not done one in a while, there might be new people, there might be old sweats that have done it a bunch of times. So it's it's a real mixed bag, but as yeah. long as like in, in that team, you just look out for each other and make sure everybody at the end of it, it's about having fun. It's not We're not here to, to get the most amount of eliminations or just to win the missions. It, this is as much a part of a Milsim environment as the missions. Joe, you know we were saying earlier, like none of us have got our phone signal on. No. It's great. It's fucking great. Living off switching grid. off. Nice. We're off grid with the boys, gooning with the boys. Yeah. Like it's just real life gaming. Yeah. But like organised well. Yeah. With like kit that we enjoy using. We've been talking a lot about kit and everything like that. So when you first went back to your first days of buying a riff and going to your first games and stuff like that, is there one bit of kit that you would have wanted to buy? Now you know how throughout your time in airsoft there's one bit of kit you could have bought. Yeah. The twisty speed loader jazz, whatever that's Odin. called. Odin speed loader. Yeah. So that big speed loader where you just slot your mag in, wind it around, and go. You can bomb up ten mags in in no time. That I would, I'd, I'd have, I'd have wished I knew about those when I first started. I got five pound before you even say it. <laughs> the blocks. Block are the only <laughs> nah, so on, on a jet. It is, is true. Though, on a jet safari, though. On a jet safari, like um, obviously um, the blocks. Bastard. MB tactical combination, though. Yeah, um, MB's good. Yeah, yeah, and I wish I like you know with the shoestring wrapped right around my ears without the balaclava. Without the balay. Um, because honestly, like when I first started airsoft, the amount of revision anti fog wipes that I went through was stupid. And also, I'd like be spraying around like a lunatic, hit like yeah, a compound yeah. wall, and because the difference in ch the temperature stopped and you stopped running glazed over with the yeah, fog yeah. and I'd just be fucking ticking and in all seriousness you're just again you're not going to have a good time mm. you know you might have been waiting for that game all week you might have been all month you might get one opportunity a month to play and you get there you're on the game field and f you fucked up so yeah in all seriousness had 10 um, JBG 10 yeah block tactical that's a good one oh, one bit of kit that you right, why don't you say block tactical then and I'll just edit his out <laughs> no no we can't do that <laughs> He's already claimed it. <laughs> One bit of kit. I think face protection actually, because I think when I first started, we had those big mesh guards. Yeah. And that was just getting in the way of the eye pro. When you bring up the riff up into your shoulder, you can get a proper like cheek well onto it. It was it was just awkward and like having so much on your face, you felt like your vision was slightly not impaired, but like a bit more tunnel visioned. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'd I'd probably say good kit to start off with as a ground rule because I mean, I remember when you bought your um, uh, Warrior plate carrier. Yeah. And at the time, I thought, oh, I don't know if I could if I could buy something that cool yet. <laughs> and in the time that you've had that, how many plate carriers have I been through? Or, or chest rigs? A a quite a fair that's few. A good, that's a good oh, the Talon! <laughs> yes, the Talon of course! Is <laughs> and it's staying on this island. Oh, you guys should have said the Talon, mate. We're going to have to redo everything <laughs> now. Take just say. I was going to go off, uh, off of what you said, Lewis, about the plate carrier I was going to say um, once you start try not to whack a load of uh, like all the attachments on everything like moving on from that probably a decent pair of boots as well yeah, so if it's if it's that, absolutely yeah. kicked it down last night and you've got wet feet throughout the whole day that's just going to ruin your day what was your first airsoft gun uh, you're using it right now Oh, so it's a Spectre Arms HK416. Fucking hell, that's a, that's a good first airsoft gun. Yeah. Mine, mine was a was a banged up um, Knight Armament M16. Okay. MOSFET was terrible. Yeah. Mine was a uh, a second third hand generation of a G and G CM16. Oh, I bought it off a bloke yeah. in the block for like thirty quid. It was brilliant. That's where it all started. And then it died. Just, just I had a, uh, a new pro honey badger AEG. Absolutely loved it. And then, <laughs> and then <laughs> I know where it was going straight away. And then I thought I'd do some modifications. So I changed the wiring and um, the wires. I put a wire slip over them. Uh, you know those hairdryer things where you seal the the wire sleeves over it. 
Um, I thought, great, I haven't touched any wires together until I realised I've just melted a piece of plastic across the wires. So I plug a battery in, I go to fire it. I do like five rounds maybe for it, and then it just like scorches my face <laughs> where, where it's set on fire in the stock and the battery. It's like, great, that's, so yeah, it was completely US after that, I but I loved it. How about you, Ryan? Mine was an Aries honey badger as well. Oh, Mine honey was an Aries guy. honey badger in tan. I remember that. With the have old, you still got it? I have still got it. If, if anyone wants it, just let <laughs> me know. Right. There is a slight little tinkering problem with it, but it shoots fine. <laughs> Another little question for everyone. You can shoot this out if you want to. I've got one in my head already. But what has been, throughout however long you've been playing, what is your funniest moment so far? I'm going to go shoot with mine. Yeah, I would. And he knows what I'm yeah. going to say because I almost died with laughter when it happened. And, and it's probably. Back. You, uh, maybe there's two occasions. Oh, good, and both occasions you were involved, to oh, be fair. So we had to go down the hill and defend a position whilst everyone came down. And we had people on our team at not as well. But it was me and him, we stuck together. And all of a sudden, I just see his figure just go slip two feet in the air <laughs> come over his head and he landed flat on his back winded himself and he's like <laughs> in the darkness we're trying to be as stealthy as possible although it wasn't funny at the time i think we've got a lot of mileage out of these two nearly falling to their demise over that cliff that was, yeah, i think looking funny. back it's one of those things that at the time we were terrified i've never seen it's, that pov before yeah, yeah it's never happened before yeah. and i hope it doesn't happen over the next 36 hours but yeah i think we've had a lot of laughs Good afterwards, there, haven't mate. we? We've had a lot of laughs afterwards. So, yeah. um, so I've got painful ones. I fucking stacked here at Anzio inside the building. It was like wet floor, and then like a cartoon with the and their feet like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Did that slip, and I fell on my mag and cracked my rib. And then no two way. weeks later, I had to skydive in South Africa with a cracked rib. So that was kind of gnarly. And then the second one. We were to go hovercraft into a game, right? I was like, right, yeah, I'm gonna fucking look sick here. <laughs> All the blokes jumping off, I fucking slipped off the side and fell in the Jumping. water. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's in the video. It's, it's in the video. Did you do your wet and dry drills afterwards? Oh, no, 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 no. True soldier. Yeah. Mine was at a CQB game. Uh, this is when we first started playing airsoft. We took a guy called Reese to a game. <laughs> Didn't wear any face protection. He gets shot in the tooth. <laughs> tooth goes out onto the floor and I'm firing at a piece of cover like yeah trying to like dip in and out I look behind me and he's there on the floor trying to work out which is a BB and which is his tooth oh, no. he's trying to find it but because he's still in he gets free dental so he's like I'm trying to find it I'm trying to find it I'm trying to find it I think he does find it but uh, he goes to the dentist the next day and they're like yeah just, he hasn't got a BB instead of a tooth no we did think that for quite a while if he could play airsoft anywhere in the world what type of airsoft game would it be and where would it be? Okay, so like, I do you have like a dream event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for me, like I've done a lot of these ultra mil sims. I like the idea of that dark emergency where it's kind of like a big open world video game basically where there's enough of a mil sim vibe to it, but there's also a kind of oh. an escapism and a, almost like a yeah, like yeah, just almost in that, that non-reality side of life. Just like you can go and like talk to an actual real-life NPC. Yeah, yeah, that'd be fantastic. I mean, like, yeah. give you like side missions. Yeah, and that'd be fantastic, yeah. You leave. Yeah, and you, and you can just go and do your own thing or you can stick to, to a more of, uh, you know, the mission profiles or do your own thing. So for me, that's what I'd like to do and, and perhaps, not that I don't enjoy the Milsim, but just have perhaps the best of both worlds to appreciate both of those, both of those play styles. So yeah, Dark Emergency 2025. I'll be there. Oh, he's, it, he's throwing that into the ether. Mm, All right, for me, um, I've always wanted to play on a cruise ship. I, clu I saw Jet Desert Fox play on this fighter, uh, play, plane carrier, right? Big fucking, what are they called? Play, play aircraft carrier. Aircraft carrier. Yeah. Nearly they were plane carrier. Plane carrier, that'll yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A big there. aircraft carrier, you played in one of those. <clears throat> but I've seen in Argentina. Where was that? Uh, that was in America. But I've seen in Argentina, They've got an abandoned cruise ship that's come onto land, and I watched the promotional video, and it's like blokes scrapping in the casino bit of it. No it's like a full-blown abandoned cruise ship, and it's like it's like a COD mission. Do you know what I mean? Something fucking alley like that. Like that's rise up my street. I think that'd be fucking epic. Sounds good, sir. Uh, I'm gonna say like an ultra next level Milsim in the jungle. So like oh. proper GBBR only in a wet like 
second degree jungle where the canopy is you know you can't use drones you can't use any aerial footage or anything like that so mine is a border war event um so four thousand plus players i don't know nico you know more about this one don't you but border war yeah, yeah four thousand players Tans, vehicles Tans. and also milson west that's not i'm not gonna lie that's a pretty big big thing for me but yeah right happy days so Episode one, pilot episode of Poncho Podcast. Thank you very much. I think you should do a little clap. That was good. Go on then, let's have a clap. So, pilot episode, Poncho Podcast. Thank you very much to my guests. Name's Nico. Charlie from JBG. Lewis from JBG. And Alex from JBG. So now we have got a mill sim to get on with, so we're going to go and prep for that. Thank you very much for watching. Stack first, mate. Commanders don't do stack. Hi. So I'm doing a 36-hour mil sim on my own.